The institutions that we've built up over the years to protect our individual privacy rights from the government don't apply to the private sector. The Fourth Amendment doesn't apply to corporations. The Freedom of Information Act doesn't apply to Silicon Valley. And you can't impeach Google if it breaks its Don't Be Evil campaign pledge. Al Franken Does it seem like every time you turn around, someone is commenting to you on something you did not understand they knew about you, or something you had no intention of sharing with anyone? Or how about the feeling of discomfort or frustration you might get each time you go to your email or your browser and you see targeted emails or ads from advertisers? Did you ever get one of those emails that begins, as someone who's purchased this product, we think you might like? Sometimes that marketing technique works for me, particularly when looking for movies to watch or books to read. Other times, I don't like that these companies perceive a little too much about my reading, watching, or buying habits. Besides marketing techniques, I'm not a big fan of the idea that someone in the office is commenting on my family party photos I come to find out were posted by my cousin or friend without my permission. These sorts of mini-invasions of my privacy make me think of more serious situations, such as an employer rejecting me because of a social media picture, comment, or rating, or an insurance provider or creditor dropping me or charging me more because of incorrect or false information that was posted on the web. On the darker days, I wonder, where does it all stop? And how can I have privacy and control around my data? There are lots of good things about being able to share my personal information. But how can I have control around my privacy? Especially when the technology often makes it so easy for my information to be misused. What is privacy and what are the risks for technology and privacy? Two definitions of privacy are the quality or state of being apart from company or observation and freedom from unauthorized intrusion, one's right to privacy. In our pursuit of better understanding ethical issues around privacy and computing, let's consider key aspects of privacy and some threats to privacy. Add one's control of information about oneself to the aspects of freedom to be apart and from intrusion or surveillance. Take the view privacy is a good thing and consider these categories as we examine privacy. Intentions, use of personal information by institutions, companies, government, and others, unauthorized uses, theft, negligence, and our own actions. Technology can do a lot of good things for us, for our information. But as we learned earlier, technology changes at a rapid pace, and our uses of technology and the laws and social practices around technology take time to catch up. We are always learning the good and bad things about technological change and then changing our practices and laws. The nature and permanence of digital records presents big challenges to this unpredictable cycle of change and consequences, however. What trade-offs do we each make around privacy? Do we give up part of our privacy in the name of security and safety, health, entertainment, efficiency, other things? To make those decisions, we need to better understand the risks. Consider some of these risks around personal data. Most everything we do in cyberspace is recorded, saved, linked to us, and many times shared. It is often difficult to understand what we are agreeing to when we click that box on a website. Data is being saved at unprecedented rates. 
Technological advances have made it easy to save a digital copy of practically everything forever. Software and systems are complex. Sometimes the creators of software and systems don't even know or comprehend all the things their products are collecting, let alone the software's vulnerabilities. Accidents happen, and sometimes even the best attempts at protecting privacy fail. Data is often used for purposes never designed for, and sometimes governments will demand sensitive or personal information from businesses and organizations. We cannot protect all of our information ourselves. We rely on businesses and organizations to manage and protect our personal information. One thing we might consider being a positive thing is that there are privacy advocates who work on principles of protection of personal data. These advocates work for fair practices and suggest how businesses and organizations should treat and manage personal information. And our rules and laws change for good reasons, albeit sometimes too late. As we continue our journey, let's add privacy to the mix. When we consider privacy, let's think about definitions, principles, trade-offs, consequences, choices, and actions.